Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Come on, can you put your hands together all over this place? Come on, do me a favor. Can you stand up all over this room? It's been a year since some of you have even been into this house. I just want to give you 15 seconds to open up your mouth and act like God's been good to you. If you know he's kept you all 2020 and even into this year, come on, open up your mouth and bless God in this place. He's been better than good to us. Come on, he kept us in our right mind. He kept us with our health and our strength. And if I had 10,000 tongues, I still couldn't praise him enough. But today we're going to give him praise. Today we're going to magnify him. And today we're going to glorify him for who he is. He's a great God. He's a great God. I don't want you to touch nobody, but just look and tell your neighbor with your mask on. Say, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to be in the house of God one more time. Oh, come on, St. Luke. Y'all can do better than that. Some of you had COVID-19 and you're still standing. Some of you, the doctor said you weren't going to make it out of this year, but you're still standing by the grace of God. Somebody ought to just say, Lord, it was your grace and your mercy, for it is sufficient. Hallelujah. One more time, put your hands together. Can we give our pastor a hand clap? <laughs> pastor Dexter Moraney, one of the greatest pastors here. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Are you excited about worship on today? Are you excited about worship on today? Come on, can you lift up your hands all over this place? Come on, I want you to do something new this year. Challenge yourself this year. Do more this year. Do more with your worship. Do more with your praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, let's lift this song up. I want y'all to repeat after me. It says, Overflow in this place have your way in this place we want more in this place have your way come on choir say overflow overflow in this place come on you say have your way in this place say we want more in this place have your way come on just tell the lord to have his way come on lift up your hands and say overflow over in this place say have your way that's all right in this place Say, we want more, God. In this place, have your way. I love the next part. This is what it says. It says this. We can't walk without you. And we can't talk without you. And I'm nothing without you. Have your way. Come on, I want us to make one big man's cry. Say, we can't walk. Come on. Without you. Say, we can't talk without you. Come on, say, I'm nothing without you. Have your way. Come on, it's a simple song. Catch your party, lift it up. Say, we can't walk without you. Say, we can't talk without you, Jesus. Say, I'm nothing without you. Have your way. Come on, one more time. You should know it by now, St. Louis. Come on, say, I can't walk without you. I feel the Holy Ghost. And I can't talk without you. Say, we're nothing without you. Have your way. Jonathan, break it for me one time. Come on, y'all say, 
say we can't walk without you and we can't talk without you say I'm nothing without you have your way I love this part right here it says if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me have your way come on Christ say if it's not pleasing Take it out of me. Say, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me, oh God. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Have your way. You got to examine your own life. And say it one more time. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, take it out of me. Said if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Have your way. Come on, we gotta do this part one more time. Say we can't walk without you. Say we can't talk without. rejoice you ought to rejoice for he is good he's great and greatly to be praised come on somebody I just look over your own life and say he's been better than good to me he's been better than good to me I can't tell it like sister Susie can tell it I can't tell it like brother John can tell it but I can tell that he's been better than good to me somebody ought to open up your mouth it's Shabbat God in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 Last time. Hallelujah. I can't walk without you. And I can't talk without you. I'm nothing without you. Have your way. That's what we're declaring all 2021. I can't walk without you. I can't talk without you. Without you, have your way. Now, if you want the Lord to have his way in your life, put your hands together like you want it for real. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You've been saving that clap for a whole year. Some of you ought to burst something down on the inside and say, God, you've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. I'm going to say it to y'all feel it. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Hallelujah.
It's now time for our scripture reading. Our scripture reading is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 7. King James edition. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that the gospel I preach to you, which you receive on which you have taken your stand by the gospel you are saved. It holds firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I receive, I pass on to you as the first important, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried, he was raised on the third day according to the scripture, and that appeared to Cephas, and then the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then the other apostles. I read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 7. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Say amen. Come on in the house. Amen. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Let every heart come on. Give, in the house. give God some glory in the house. Come on. We've been to give God praise all year long, all last year. And God, yep, have been blessing us. We got to tell God thank you. Anybody here just want to tell God thank you in the building? Just to ask a question, do you have anything to thank God for in the house? We may not have went through the same thing, but we done went through something. So we got something to tell God thank you for. Come on, just lift your hands in the air right quick and just tell God thank you now. Come on now, that ain't good. That's good enough for me, but that ain't good enough for God. Come on, just lift, lift those hands in the air and just tell God, I thank you now. God has been good to all of us. And we got to tell God thank you. And you know, sometimes we just got to look back and we just got to get personal with God. For conversation with Him. And sometimes we just got to get all by ourselves. No one is around. Sometimes you got to just get in your secret closet. Georgette, you know. And about everything that's going on around us. And, and sometimes we wonder what God is. And, then do, and what we need to do is just tell God these words right here. We just got to tell God. Thank you. You love. Thank you. You love. Anybody want to tell them thank you? Thank you, you love. I just want to thank you, you love. Come on, help me tell them. Thank, oh, I thank, thank you, love. Thank, oh Lord, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank, oh, I thank you, Lord. I just want thank you, Lord. You've been. My, my friend, be my, my friend. Oh, you've been, you've been my, 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 my friend. And I 
magnify your name we glorify you God we lift our voices to you and we give you the highest praise God we say hallelujah in this building because you are worthy of all of the praise God we ask you to come in the building right now and move like you want to move God say what you want to say God sing the song that you want to sing and God we give you praise right now for you are worthy God of all of the praise God we magnify you God we thank you for our pastor God and our first lady God we ask you to continue to bless them God and whatever it is they stand in the need of God we ask you to do it right now in the name of Jesus God if it be anyone here that's not feeling well we ask you to touch right now in the name of Jesus heal right now in the name of Jesus remove pain right now in the name of Jesus, God is so because you said so. In Jesus' name, it's in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you now. And we'll be careful, God, to give you praise and to give you glory. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Me. Well, we 
you are the living God, my Savior. You are my fortress forever, my King. Come on, lift your hands, give God the praise. And I'm overwhelmed by your mercy. And I'm satisfied that you love me. Jesus Christ, who are the living God, my Savior. You are my portion forever, my King. I'm over, I'm over, by your And I'm satisfied, and I'm satisfied that you love Jesus Christ. You are the living My Savior, you are my portion. And I'm overwhelmed, overwhelmed by your mind. And I'm satisfied. Jesus Christ. My Savior. together today. It is a good Amen. Amen. It is to be in this place and it's good to have you in this place. I'm 
God some praise for just for all of us in this place today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God is worthy to be praised. And this Easter Sunday morning is a great day to celebrate what God has done through Jesus Christ. And we thank God for your presence, whether you are in person or whether you are doing virtual. We just praise God for you right now. And we tell you we love you today. We love you with the name of our God. Amen. Today. Amen. Amen. One, one thing you don't have to be is you don't have to be afraid to worship. Uh, you, you don't have to be afraid to worship. You can worship God because he deserves all of our praise. Amen today. We thank God for you. We thank God for every person that is alive and doing well. Amen today. We praise God for the music minister this morning. Just give them a hand. Amen. Amen. We, won't, we won't hold you. We won't detain you long. We're going to move forward and uh, get you out of here. We stand safe. This has been a great morning. This has been a great morning. A great morning of making sure everyone is safe. All of the team that made things work and the clock work and making it safe for everybody. This has been a great morning this morning and we thank God for you. I want to remember and praying for Deputy Terrence Mitchell. Uh, Terrence is going to have surgery this week uh, that, but we're praying that God will certainly bless his life. You'll see names, the names that are listed that we can while we are praying you can pray for those who are rolled up on the, on the list of those who are needing prayer this morning. But we're praying special prayer for Walter Bobby. Walter had surgery this week. That God will bless him uh, this week. Praying for Cora Holland. God will breathe on Cora today. Cora had surgery this week. Your amens ought to be even greater. And it ought to be greater because you didn't have surgery. You, you didn't have it. You were blessed. But we praying for Cora this morning. Praying for Trees. Because the caregiver needs prayer. Needs encouragement. And we're praying for Trees this morning. Lord, I thank you right now. I give you honor, God, and I give you praise for Jesus Christ. Great is your name and it's great that to be praised. We come this morning to magnify your name today. God, we lift up every name that's on this list. Every need that's on this list. And then there are many names not on this. Many names are not been called. But what we do know, you know everybody by name. And you know exactly where they are or what they stand in need of. And we just call in on you today because you said in your word. That we call, you'll answer us. And God, we're praying right now that you'll bless in this place. We're praying right now, God, for every person who's gone through this COVID situation. But yet you have delivered us. And we come to tell you this Easter morning, thank you for it. We just come to give you honor and praise for what you've done for us. We've been through a lot, but you brought us through every way. We've been around the mountain. We've been over some hills. We've been in some valleys. But Lord, you brought us every step of the way. And all we can do right now, I tell you, thank you for it. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Blessing this place. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you have your Bibles, you're online looking. Bring your device to this passage of scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. Amen. Verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. That he was buried, yes. that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about this morning, 
resurrection of Jesus. Resurrection of Jesus. When you read the text, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, what you have in the text that Paul writes to this church at Corinth because of their problems with believing and in the resurrection of Jesus. So he had to pen a letter to them to try to and convince them and let them know that Jesus has been resurrected. And when you look at the gospel and you start wanting to find what the gospel is, when you read 1 Corinthians 3 and 4, you see exactly what the gospel is. Amen. The gospel is Jesus died, Amen. Jesus was buried, yeah. and Jesus rose again. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's the gospel. That, that, is, that is the whole gospel. No matter how many sermons we preach, uh, no matter how many songs we sing, yes, that's the gospel. Yes, that he died, yeah. that he was buried but he rose again. Yes. Without the reality of resurrection, Christians have no basics for hope. Because the question comes, why is this happening? The question comes in our life, when will everything go back to normal? The question comes, why is God, when it feels like everything is falling off? The questions come, but I tell you today, this morning, without the resurrection, we cannot answer those questions. But with the resurrection, the why is this happening it comes to focus. And I tell you, let's, as a matter of fact, when we study uh, this resurrection chapter of the Bible, you look at it and you, you begin to, to look it over, you discover the biblical facts of the resurrection, and we look forward to an exciting future. That's, what's, that's, what I, that's why I'm so excited this morning. I'm excited this year about the resurrection, maybe more than any year I've ever lived my life. This resurrection today brings me to reality that if I'm going to have hope for a future, then I must believe in the resurrection. As a matter of fact, you, you all could have stayed at home. As a matter of fact, you could turn your computer off right now. Because if you don't believe in the resurrection, then you're really wasting time. Because the resurrection is the key to our belief in Jesus the Christ. Yes, and I tell you, that's why he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 through 19, Paul says to him, if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. I just told you that you might as well stay at home. If he, ain't, if he hadn't been raised, what you believed in is already in vain. Then you look at the verse, he said, you are, and then only if your faith in vain, he said, you're still in your sin. Oh, Y'all didn't hear what he said. Yeah. And then they also, which have fallen asleep, those of our loved ones that have fallen asleep, he says, in Christ, they are already in perish. Yes, are y'all here? But then he says, another if, he said, but if this life only, right. we have hope in Christ. Yeah. We are all of most men uh, it pitiful and miserable. Because if you don't have Jesus Christ, you're living a miserable life. But I come to tell you today, the resurrection of, uh, of Christ was, was the touchstone uh, of the gospel. Because if he didn't, if it didn't happen, our lives are futile and meaningless. If it didn't happen, if it's just something that man came up with and he did not rise from the dead, then our life is meaningless. It makes no sense, but there's proof that he did rise. There's proof, a matter of fact, he just read to us 500 folk. So 500 folk went ahead on an illusion. Two or three could have, but 500 didn't have an illusion. They said they saw him and he looked just like he looked when he got out the grave. And matter of fact, he ate dinner with them. Uh, he supped with them uh, just like he did uh, before he went in the grave. And Paul said, not only did they see him, uh, he said, I saw him also. Yeah. Yeah. I'm preaching the Bible, but you just don't know it yet. Because the idea Paul says is this. We cannot, brothers and sisters, we cannot overestimate the importance of Jesus' resurrection. We can't overestimate it. It is so important to why we have church. 
It's so important by what you have believed in and how you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis. That Jesus is alive. And when you think about that, you think for a moment, just think with me for a moment. You would not have gotten out of your bed earlier this morning to get up and come to church at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock for a dead situation. Come on now, y'all, y'all be on the mute. You, 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 matter of fact, if you haven't already rolled over in the bed, you would have never rolled over and tuned us in uh, if this was about something that was dead. The reason why we got up this morning uh, and wanted to come and praise God uh, because we came because he lives. Not because he died. Uh, we came because he lives. Oh, y'all, y'all, I'm not. We came because he rose from the dead. Christ is risen up from the dead. Look at verse 20. He said, But now is Christ risen from the dead, and he become the first fruits of them that have already went to sleep. Christ is risen from the dead. He is risen. Jesus Christ delivered death, is deciding blow. Buddha didn't do it. Muhammad didn't do it. Confucius didn't do it. Are y'all here? Because if you check it out, one of those names I just call is still in the grave. Buddha is still there. Muhammad is still there. Are y'all here? Christa, the Hindu religion, he's still in the grave. But if you go to Palestine, and you go to Palestine, and you look for where they put Jesus, He's the only tomb that is empty. Everybody else is still in the grave. It's in here, know that. It ought to be ten folk that really, it ought to be my fact. We ought to be shouting all over this place. I said those other religions, uh, the leader is dead. But our leader is alive. Oh my, my God, he did, not, he did not just die and stay in the grave. He said he was buried, but Paul said he rose up again. Yes, People like to call Jesus a good teacher. Yes. They like to call him really a great prophet. Yes. But his resurrection places him in a class all by himself. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, preach Moreno. Because if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. If Christ have not been raised, our faith is in vain. Because without the resurrection, we are still, I tell you, be dead in our sin. That should have put a clapping in your hand. And it should have put a stand up on your feet. I'll say that one more time. He rose. He's alive. It should have put a clapping in your hand. And it should have on your feet. Y'all ain't really got it here. I because not that he's dead. We praise on him because he's alive. Matter of fact, y'all ought to give God some praise in this place. Okay, if you put both your hands together, if you stand on your feet in this place, you doing it because he is alive. I, oh, I, I got it. Let me see. I, I see y'all. I, I see. I feel y'all. Y'all all scared and bored. And think something's going to happen to you. If it don't happen to you out there, it ain't going to happen in here. Because I tell you one day, if God can't cover his people, he ain't going to cover nobody. But I came here to tell you right now, even though we sit in social distance, you might be saying, maybe today is the wrong Sunday for you to be sitting on my pew. Maybe you should have sit somewhere else. Because I got a praise report. You might need to move right now because I got a praise report. I got a praise report that doors have been opened. Y'all are here right now. I got a praise report that many that have not been covered, tested positive, but they already been negative for a whole year. I got a praise. That's why I'm trying to get y'all to hear. And y'all sitting there just, huh? I know you behind a mask. I know you're sitting social distance, but I tell you one thing, let me get a little bit closer to you. Some folk died from it, but you still here. And I came a little bit closer to tell you, not only am I praising him, God woke me up this morning. 
God. Y'all come on in here today. He woke me up this morning and I tell you he lived. Let me go back over my statement again. That should put a clapping in your hand. It should put a stand up on your feet. If you still alive, God has taken care of you. You kept your job. If you kept your health and you behind your you made it on your tell you how you made it. Grace. Y'all turn me up in here. Grace woke me up this morning. Grace started me on my way. So he lived the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus. It's not just about Jesus. It's really about us. <laughs> it ain't just about Jesus. It's really about us. Priest Moraine. Because the first point I want to raise is I'll get ready to go to my seat shortly. I didn't say soon, I said shortly. So don't time me. I ain't y'all ain't been here in a year. I haven't seen some of y'all in a year. Matter of fact, you ought to be willing to praise his name. My God here today, I'm because one thing I'm glad about, I can see some of y'all. It was some of that was here last year that's not here right now. It ain't that they're at home, they're already in glory. And you sit up here acting like y'all all funny and acting real strange. You better be glad you up in here. Oh, you better be glad you anywhere that God has given you life. Praise me right now. I tell you, the reason why I'm excited about it, Linda, the reason I'm excited about it, because Jesus yes. is the first fruit yes. of the resurrection. And that's what we read. He said, can y'all say he's the first fruit, he's the first fruit. Of, the resurrection. of the resurrection? Yeah, what do you mean by first fruit? In Leviticus chapter 23 was a Jewish feast. It was a harvest that they would bring the barley wheat. And they would spread it out. The first fruits was a sign of a harvest was going to come. Are y'all here? And the resurrection of Jesus is a sign of the resurrection of all believers, which is the come. When the priests would get the harvest and they would get the wheat, they would throw it. They would wave it in the air. They would wave it because this was the first fruits. This was the first thing that first fruits of the harvest. Paul's called Jesus Christ, he was the first fruits of God's harvest. A harvest of living souls who will be raised, whose life will be raised up because of the atoning death of Jesus Christ. His resurrection is not just another resurrection. Matter of fact, better than that is the first fruits of a harvest. Oh my God, I said he's the first fruit of a harvest which is going to include uh, 2,000 2,000 years later it's going to affect all of us because he was the first fruit and he said there is more to come <laughs> matter of fact he's the first fruit meaning Jesus is waving uh, the resurrection uh, of his life Jesus is the first fruit his resurrection secures our resurrection in spiritual life today and bodily resurrection tomorrow. His resurrection uh, secures me that is more to come. Ooh, let me put that on your street right now. In other words, when Jesus got up first, what the Jewish feast was, they said it's going to be some more harvest later. Y'all ain't got it yet. When Jesus got up out the grave uh, and waved as being the first fruit, he said, there's more to come. In other words, since I got up, it's some more folk going to get up. Since I got up, everybody that dies after I got up is going to get up also. That means everybody that done died before, everybody going to die later on. What we got assurance is uh, that each one of us going to be raised uh, from the grave. Ooh, my God, I feel like preaching, and I don't care if you don't say amen. I said one more time, there is more to come. Can y'all say there's more to come? Y'all, I said there's more to come. I, Jesus was raised first, and it's going to be more to come. Ooh, my, matter of fact, since y'all like tattooing and stuff like that, y'all like, I'll give you three words to remember and make them your next tattoo. Yeah. 
put that on your tattoo. Remember from the resurrection of Jesus. Since you like to put them on each shoulder, put on one shoulder, God is able. Put on the next shoulder, he lives. Y'all ain't got it yet, I tell you. Uh, God is able, no matter what you face, God is able. No matter how dark the night, God is able. No, no matter how bad you feel, God is able. And I got five folk in here can say amen right there. And so I know what he's talking about. Because I'm a next tattoo I get, I'm going to let the world know that God is able. And if he's able to raise Jesus, he's also able to raise me. I hate to tell y'all, everybody in here is going to die one day. Everybody in here is going to go in the grave one day. But the joy of it is, I'm not going to stay in the grave. I will be raised from the grave. Ooh, my God, that's the, that's the first fruit. Uh, let me try to teach it and get out of here. That's the first fruit. Then, the second point is the foundation of the resurrection. Not only is there a fruit, but there's also a foundation. Look what he says. Since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. That's verse 21, 22. We lost in Adam, but we gained in Christ. In Adam, we all die. But in Jesus, we are alive. Listen, listen. It was never God's plan for us to die. No, no. Man was supposed to live forever. It was his plan for us to live forever. It wasn't God's plan for us to age. Oh, y'all, it wasn't his plan for us to age. It wasn't his plan for us to die. But when Adam and Eve sin in the God. If y'all thought I was going to just say Adam and they're going to talk about Eve. No, when Adam messed up, that's when death came. That's when we start aging. That's when things start happening to our bodies. And all of us in here, since they sinned, face the repercussions of what they did. Oh my God, everybody here reap the repercussions of what happened and we face the repercussions of what happened in the Garden of Eden. But there's a foundation to this resurrection. But here's the Easter message. The Easter message is Jesus died. That's the, mess the message is Jesus rose from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus says we, we're going to live beyond the grave. I'm going to get to your house in a minute. He said, we, because of Jesus' resurrection, uh, we're going to live beyond uh, the grave. Yeah. There's a paradigm that I learned some years ago. The paradigm went like this. It said, if you have been born once, you would have to die twice. But if you're born twice, you won't have to die once. <laughs> Y'all ain't got it. <laughs> born once, die twice. That means when you're born once, Georgette, you die physically and you die spiritually. Physical death, let me tell you what it is. It's a separation of soul from body. That's when, that's when you die physically, you separate from soul and body. Spiritual death is when you're separated of your soul from God forever. Oh my God, you, are y'all here? You don't want the, the second death. You want to make sure you have already been born physically, but you need to get born spiritually. Ooh, my God, I'm, what y'all come to church for? I know where y'all show up today. If y'all don't like no better than this, we might have just had it all virtual. I said again, uh, you already been born physically. You need to get born spiritually. So, cause let me tell you one thing: if you, when you die, or I tell you what y'all just said, if you've been born once. You're going to die twice. But if you've been born twice, you're going to die once. So in other words, all of us are going to go in the grave. But what don't go in the grave is my soul. My God, my, my soul don't go in the grave. My body go in, but my soul don't go in. 
Yeah, yeah, you ought to be clapping your hand here. Your body gonna go in, but your soul gonna go in. Jesus come back. Unless, I tell you, unless Jesus come back with it before I die, then I won't have to die at all. Yeah, y'all, y'all making preaching hard. I said, Jesus comes back before I die, then I won't have to die at all. Now that's enough to say amen. In other words, I'm going to escape death. If he comes back before I leave here, I'm going to escape death and I'm going to go right to be with him. I ain't telling you I want to die. I want to live. So if I'm going to live, if he comes back before I die, I have to die. I'm going to escape death. I'm going to give that person, they ain't done nothing all day, a chance to clap your hand. Yes, yes, yes. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Y'all ain't want to die. Don't fool me today. You don't want to die. You want Jesus to come quickly. Lord Jesus. Are y'all here? I'm almost done. I tell you, we have a first fruits. We have a foundation. But then, Georgia, we got a future order of the resurrection. Yeah, we got a future order of the resurrection. Matter of fact, this is how the order go. Stage one resurrection of Jesus Christ he's already been raised stage two the resurrection of the believers that have been saved through Jesus Christ resurrection of Jesus stage one stage two is the resurrection of the believers in other words you said well that's only been one you said Jesus resurrection is first yes I know y'all smart, educated, and all that stuff. You said, well, you're all wrong, Marina. That ain't true. You said, well, and I'm so glad y'all that smart because there have been more than one resurrection. Gee, are y'all here today? You know, Lazarus got up. That was a resurrection. The widow's son on her way to Nan, on her way to the graveyard to bury her son. All of a sudden, Jesus showed up. While they were getting ready to take the casket inside the, inside the cemetery, he stopped the funeral procession and put his hand on the coffin and the boy got up out the coffin. Y'all, y'all don't know the Bible here. The guy boy got up and he was alive forevermore. But let me tell you the difference between then and I know in the New Testament there's ten more. Matter of fact, there's eight more resurrections of other people. But I still say Jesus, resurrection is the first. Are y'all here? Because all of them that I just named, Lazarus, the widow's son, and the other eight that got out the grave, they went back in. But Jesus, when he got up, he never went back to the grave. He never had to die anymore. When Jesus died, he didn't die no more. Everybody here at least going to die, but one day going to be a rapture. That's some all I say is true, is that the believers, priest Moraine, that have died before me, what I do know, something else going to happen. Yeah. Are y'all here? First Thessalonians said, listen, Moraine, for the Lord himself yeah. going to come down from heaven. Yeah. And the loud shout with a trumpet, the call of God. And the dead in Christ going to rise first. Yeah. Then say, after that, who will still alive are left to be caught up together with them in the clouds yeah. to meet the Lord. The Lord in the air, so we shall ever be with the Lord. Yes. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I, I've been thinking about this all year long. I've been waiting for Easter to come because I need to express myself to tell you about the resurrection of those who already have gone to glory. Uh, well, and then I hear somebody say, well, Marina, what about those who already have died? What about my mom and dad? What about my brothers and sisters? Those already have died before. It have, what's going to happen to them? Jesus said, look, don't worry about them. Don't, don't worry about them. Because let me tell you, he said, I'll tell you what's going to happen with them. He said, it's going to be a loud shout. And those who die in Christ is going to get up first. <laughs> so if your mom and dad are already dead, already in the grave, he said, in that day, it's going to be a shout. 
and those who died before you gonna get up first. That means all who love our loved ones have died first. They gonna participate in stage two. Oh my God. They gonna participate in the next resurrection. Cause Jesus said, we gonna experience some resurrected bodies. Y'all just heard what I read. He said, well, we, what we gonna see? He said, they gonna get up first. And then he said, we're going to be caught up in the air. We're going to pick up while they already got their new bodies. He said, when he come with that shout, he said, automatically, we're going to catch him in the air. Living Christians will be transported with the resurrected Christians, and we're going to meet Christ in the air. Y'all don't know when to say amen. Those who died before you, your mom and daddy died before you, when Jesus make that shout, all of a sudden they gonna get up first. And we gonna meet them in the air. We gonna have new bodies like they got new bodies. We gonna have resurrected bodies like they have resurrected bodies. You say, will I know them? Are you kidding me? You gonna know them as they were. Can I get an amen in here? Got resurrected bodies. He said, I'm gonna do it in a twinkling. Oh, but now, oh yeah, well, y'all ain't got it. Ooh, let me try. Look, I tell you what it's gonna be. It's gonna be an upgrade. It's, it's right here in the Y'all, y'all ain't got it, y'all. It's gonna be an upgrade. If Christ been raised, we gonna be raised. It be an upgrade. AT and T keep calling me and bothering me about getting an upgrade. I, I, I automatically, I clean it off. I because if this phone don't go out, I ain't getting an upgrade. I don't care about no 12, 13, 14, or 15. I'm going to keep what I got. But if I need one, they tell me you can get an upgrade. I'm trying to tell y'all this morning, when Jesus come back, we're going to get an upgrade. Yeah, you're going to get an upgrade because you're going to get another box. This body here wearing out. This body here get sick. This body here get COVID-19. I see Jesus in a twinkling of an eye. I'm going to get an upgrade. Bill, that y'all ain't got it yet. Bill, I ain't going to just have an upgrade. I'm going to have an uplift. Because the Bible said he going to come with a shout like an angel and, and he going to lift me up. Y'all ain't got, I got to upgrade, I got to uplift, but I'm going to need an usher to get me in. Are y'all here? He said, that's all right, I got the usher. He said, I'm going to come and catch you up in the air, and you shall ever be with the Lord. Ain't he all right today? Yeah, you, you talking about having a hard year. You talking about having a hard year. I don't have a hard year with death. But I'll tell you one thing, when I start looking at resurrection, I stop getting so worried. Because what I do know is I close up my Bible, I'm going to get an upgrade. I'm also going to have an uplift. And I'm also going to have an usher. Because what I do know, I got a boy in glory. And when I get glory, he going to get up first. And I'm going to meet him in the air. Y'all I'm going to meet him in the air. Because if you believe in Jesus Christ, you ought to bump somebody. I know you can't touch him. Just bump somebody and tell somebody I'm... I'm going to have an upgrade. I'm going to have an uplift. And I'm going to have an usher to bring me in to where Jesus is. Good morning, St. Luke. That's all I came to tell you. Because after this, he said, it's going to be a tribulation. Believers ain't got to worry about the tribulation. He said, because seven years, it's going to be hard for folk to believe in Jesus. For seven years, it's going to be a tribulation. But I ain't worried about the tribulation period. I'm already be gone before the tribulation period comes. Good morning, y'all. Some of y'all can remember Ali and Foreman. Are y'all here? Some of the old guys know Ali. And the girls do too. And they know George Foreman. Listen, George was young. And George had a big fist. He could hit hard. One lick, bro, knock you out. Ali had gotten older. Are y'all here? And then he understood how to fight a game. 
Are y'all here? And one day, they got this fight going between Ali and Form. Yes, but you know, Ali was a smart fight. He came up, they called the rope a dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he came up with the rope a dope. That means he would ball up in a ball. And while the foreman was hitting him, he act like he about to kill him. But it was just rope a dope. And he'd come back as foreman and say, Ali would say, That's all you got? That's all you got? Foreman would start swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging. By the eighth round, by the eighth round, foreman done got tired of swinging and swinging. And Ali, all he doing is just getting in the ball with a rope or dope. And about the eighth round, all y'all hear Ali seize the moment. Because he saw Foreman had gotten tired. The, the, the story is that he knocked him out four times. He knocked him down four times in one round. TKO knocked him out in one round. Ali won the battle. All right. The greatest fight that's ever been fought. Yes, Are y'all here? Yes. But what happened is that never was a rematch. Right. Priest Moreno. Yeah. Never was a rematch between Foreman and Ali. Never fought again. Few times in, in boxing history that the champ has been beaten and never had a rematch. Yeah. So they interviewed Oh, Ali. And they asked Ali why you didn't ever give Foreman a rematch. All, right. All Ali said in his own Ali fashion, I beat him so bad the first time. Ain't no need to fight him again. Y'all, good morning, y'all. That's all I came to tell you. Meet me at Calvary. Ain't he all right? Meet me at Calvary. Show you the death was a heavyweight champion. Death was a heavyweight champion of the world. But he lost when Jesus died on a hill called Calvary. He died, but he rose a king. And Jesus looked over at death and told death, I beat you so bad, I never got to fight you again. Ain't he all right? Good morning, y'all. You ain't got to be afraid of death. Because when Jesus fought death, he never have to fight again. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I like that old singing. It brings some meaning to this day. Because he lives, I got a future. Because he lives, I can face my tomorrow. Ain't he all right? Can I get y'all to act crazy one time? Can I get y'all to praise him? I'll say one more time. He lives. That ought to put some clapping in your hand. It ought to put some stand up in your feet. Why are y'all so bored in here? It ought to put some stand up in your feet. If you know he's alive, you sitting on your bed. You ought to sit up in the bed and say he lives. Yes. Yes. Christ Jesus lives today. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. The door of the church is open. That's us today. The door is open for you to come. The door is open for you to come wherever you are. Because he lives.
camera on yeah. that. I don't see it on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. They call him Jesus. <laughs> he came to love. The door is open today.
accept him as Savior. Because I'm telling you, if you've been born once, you're going to have to die twice. But if you've been born twice, you won't have to die once. Die once. Physically and spiritually. Your soul won't go in. Your body. Good, but not your soul because you've been born twice this morning as we celebrate today we're grateful for what Jesus did at Calvary we celebrate his love his death we celebrate this morning if you're at home and you have what you need to celebrate with crackers whatever you're using this morning we celebrate this Easter Sunday morning hallelujah to the Lamb of God what he did at Calvary. As we bow heads this morning, we pray right now, God, that you will bless this bread and this wine. Thank you right now for what you have done. Bless it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the shed blood. Not a bone would be broken. You say your body was, but not a bone. I thank God for Jesus. That night, all the same man. On that night he took the bread and he broke it. This is my body. Eat it. Do it in remembrance of me. Can we all eat together? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Likewise, the cup of the New Testament. He said, this is my blood. He said, drink this. Do this in remembrance of me. Can we all drink together in the name of the Father, Son, Amen for Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. It covers you. Awesome. Ready to leave? Thank God for your presence. There's announcements that you shall see on the screen. This morning, one major announcement is that we will have a vaccine will be given here. St. Luke Church this coming Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. You can get Moderna or you can get Johnson & Johnson. It helps us fight off another virus. It helps us to get back to normal. We pray that you pray about it. Let God lead you in what you need to do. It's going to be an important factor as we go further and further into this season We'll be here at St. Luke. You can let others know in this community, around this area, that the vaccine will be here this coming Saturday, 9 o'clock. No appointments necessary. Just come, first come, first serve. We will be able to receive your shot on the Saturday. God bless you and may God keep you in perfect peace. Certainly we praying again for Rahala. God bless him. Plan for Walter Bobby. God will give him strength. Praying for Terrence as he goes into the ministry. Amen. 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 All eyes, all hearts are clear. Minds are clear. Hearts are fixed of God. We praise God for your coming this morning. Worshiping.